I have the light on now, so the candle is pretty much ineffective. But it still looks cool. It looks like it's a fucking small supernova in my room, but there isn't. The flame isn't that significant. There's that guy. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm gonna step my pillow. You know, I was I was journaling about it, and people come up. Does he go up? Does he go up? Yeah, Hong. Meow. I had a good look at me. I was journaling about it, and I was saying that um, his erratic behavior recently, like the small cries, like he usually like meows a bit, and then he's like, to me, it's like a small cry for help. These small cries for help are indicative of him trying to reawaken that masculine urge to, uh, to adventure and to explore and to live life. You know, he usually sometimes, at least once a week, he just goes like, wee, 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 wee. Oh, <laughs> Look at me like that. <laughs> I got juice. I don't drink coffee in the morning. Because I like, I don't like coffee. I like the taste. But I don't like coffee. I got an apple, banana, and water. I was gonna journal, but instead I wanted to video journal instead because that's more effective, right? Now I think, I think journaling on paper is more effective because then you get to look back at it. But then video editing, you also can get look. No video journaling, you can also look back at it. I think it's more meaningful if you, if you. Paper journal. Why can't I write? Why not? Why can't I speak? Why can't I speak, man? Weird. I'm gonna show you YouTuber pants. <laughs> I'm in two minds at the moment, and I want to talk about that. Basically, before, like, I, I didn't. I was against it before because I wanted it, talk about my cat, and then talk about two minds thing, the entrepreneurship thing. But yeah, we'll go into that in a minute. But before talking about my cat, he got he got neutered. And it wasn't my idea, it was my mum's idea. And that isn't to blame my mum or anything. It's because it's gonna start spaying everywhere. You know, it's gonna start spraying everywhere. It's gonna be disgusting, right? It's gonna smell the entire household, house, and it's gonna be horrible and hard to deal with. But I still wanted kittens, and I still wanted my cat to live life a little. It's kind of weird to say. I wanna be a wingman for my cat, you know? just sad seeing him look out the window all the time just wish and pray for a better life he's an adorable young man but yeah reminds me of myself just suddenly trapped into this little room I don't want to be trapped if I make money I'll make out anyway the moment I'm in two minds which is what the video is is which is what this video is for which, which is like I'm probably gonna name it watch who you take advice from something clickbait like that and uh, I'm gonna fart I'll be alright <laughs> so I don't want to fart on camera I don't know if you heard it if you heard it that'd be embarrassing I'll keep it in the video though, it's uncut. You guys get to smell my fart 4K quality. <laughs> now it's not follow me. I I look probably mentally disgusting here. <laughs> Do I cut this out of the video? <laughs> I can cut this out of the video real quick with, on the editing software. Nah. Unless this video reaches over 50 minutes, then I won't. It should be my uncut channel though, so yeah, I want to keep it uncut as possible. You guys can see my raw self. I'm into my moment. Um, I'm currently reading a book, Unscripted by NJ DeMarco, and NJ DeMarco is a 50 year old semi retired entrepreneur, uh, visionary, innovator, and how do I say his author. And he's great, honestly. He's 50 years old and he lives an amazing life. Rich as fuck. He's I think he's teased that he has a kid in his life. He talks about a teenage boy in his life, so he has children, which is good. 
I think I want, I want to have kids one day as well, but I have to reach a certain level of fiscal, you know, success before I actually get to like do that. Because what's the point if you can't, like, you know, what's the point if you can't provide for your family? There's no point. So just fucking going around, and sleeping around with no means. I mean, if you're having doing it to have fun, then sure, right? But at some point, you might get a girl pregnant. It's very common. You get a girl pregnant, and you're not really financially ready, and she's kind of stupid and young. You're kind of stupid and young, and you guys aren't even thinking properly about it. And before you know it, you got a kid on your hands, and boom! Now you're trapped to her. You have to be exclusive to her. You have to provide for her, because that's the duty of a man, right? He has to. He has to provide. Which is a big issue. One of what I've seen so far, because that's what a lot of guys do. They go around sleeping around, thinking that they're the G, the top G, top boss. But then I'm just catching a fucking kid and being trapped in the eternal slavehood of the 9 to 5. I'm speaking about the 9 to 5. I'm in two minds at the moment. There's a guy called, I can't really say his real name, you, might, you guys actually might find him. With the, with the YouTube thing, I actually want to go viral. I actually plan to go viral, so. It is what you like, but I can't. What are you looking at me for? Oh, I didn't mean like that. Hello. <laughs> Are you staring the camera like that? Wow, ignore. Okay, okay, look at this guy. That's my desk. Look at my chair, bro. You can see my ass stained. <laughs> I have this chair for over like five years now. Five years? I think it's over been three, three, four years. You can see my ass stained. I think I'm getting another chair to be honest because like a Herman Miller, but that's quite expensive. The light is a bit on me. I've got the light on me here. I hope it is. I haven't thought about this fully. Anyways, I'm in two minds at the moment. There's a guy called Joe. I call him Joe. I don't know anyone called Joe. I call him Joe. There's a, I have MJ DeMarco on one side. He's 50 years old. And a semi retired entrepreneur, an innovator, visionary, author. who's answering all the questions that I need to be answered in this book that I'm reading. On the flip side, I have Joe, who, who, is, who is like telling me to get a business plan together. He's telling me to invest into crypto and invest into stock and invest into companies and invest into this and mutual funds and ETFs and all this bullshit when the average Joe over here who's 50 years old still working a 9 to 5 who's never had a successful business in his life ever who's completely reliant and dependent on the income coming in from the 9 to 5 he's telling me to have a business plan well, MJ DeMarco here is 50 semi retired entrepreneur he's telling me to have no business plan and instead just take action And this ties into the, the, the topic of the video today, which is what you're taking advice from. Is the person that you're taking advice from living the life that you desire? Because I, 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 you should just send that question for a while. Is the person you're taking advice from living the life that you desire? Is it? No? Don't, don't take advice from them because that person can only really take you to the place that they are or if so a bit higher like for example your parents god bless them they're doing their hardest to raise you but if they're working hard at the right thing they can make infinitely more money they have infinitely more comfort and have infinitely better life at best but you could become a doctor, thanks to their financial support, or an engineer, earning 40, 50 grand a year, which is good money, but not good enough. Think of that money, right? Unless you reach the tens of thousands per month, and the hundreds of thousands per year, the problem with money is that it will never be enough. Because if I want to make like 40, 50 grand a year, a tax bill could come. I might get a kid, mortgage, interest rate on mortgage, you'll be paying that for the next 10, 20 years. You don't even want to live there for the next 20, 20 years. You're not even sure if you want to live there for the next 10, 20 years. You haven't even thought that far in the future yet. And you're already paying a mortgage that will cost you 10, 20 years of your life with a 50 grand a year income. And you're not even getting 50 grand a year, you're getting like 36. 
12k off taxes straight up. They took 12 grand. They took 12 grand of the money you made. You actually instant. You think you're making like 15 an hour, 15 20 an hour? No, you're not making 15 20 an hour. You're making like fucking close to 10 or 8 minimum wage, or 11 to 12, something like that. <clears throat> if you minus tax, great, right? juice and then there's bills and if you're if you're 50k and you're super young making that on my money amazing but if you're not 15k being super young making that money you aren't in the best position in life like 50 grand it's really good money but it's never enough because then you you will have adult responsibilities right like taking care of family maybe your mother can't work anymore your father can't work anymore they can work then great but if they usually they can't if you're reaching the point where you make 50 grand within a career they can't work anymore and then you have to provide for them hello Yoin. hello Um, your parents can't work anymore, and now you got maybe you have a wife and kids you have to take care of. You're just perpetually trapped into this just live to breed lifestyle, which I really, really dislike. Like I obviously don't have any, I don't have a vendetta against having a wife and kids. I think having a wife and kids and having your own family and creating your own house. In my, in my culture, I see as a house. Like after you made a kid and your own wife. You can have that as a separate house. Why not? I'm in my mom's house. If you get it, like I have my grandma's house. It's like when you have like the thing into like what was it King Julius the Third? He's the third generation of House Julius, something like that. And that's how I see generation of my culture. And I think it's quite beautiful to have your own family. However, I am against being trapped, being a servant trapped by servitude to people that you barely like which is a big issue which I've seen in the modern day where a lot of men start finding a woman they don't really like and you just mistakenly slept with in a drunken night and they end up throwing away all their years of life for what? for what? for nothing it's often quite disturbing to think that none of us are really that far away from that lifestyle if we make an a unreasonable choice because we delve into and how do I say this not if you fall into the trap but you don't need to give yourself something not succeed uh. sorry pardon me you not delve into the trap I'm using all my brain cells all two of them in fact to try to figure this shit out you give yourself to hedonism which is what I was trying to say and it's very very easy for us to fall into one of these lifestyles especially as men because if we don't we're like oh yeah fuck that kid that kid isn't mine we feel wrong in our heart and if you're able to do that then and you don't feel wrong in your heart then you're probably a scumbag And the lack of freedom, the lack of awareness in a life worth living in my eyes at least is what I call it a life worth living, a life that it com com entails complete freedom to whoever you want, whatever you want, however you want. When you obstruct yourself with chasing women, chasing hedonism and fall into the trap of hedonism and pleasure, arbitrary pleasure at a young age, you can only set yourself up to fail. You're gonna set yourself up too. Cause he. <laughs> oh, this is video is reaching 15 minutes, bro. God damn. This is like a watch who you take advice from video, but it ended up being.
No, I'm just gonna leave it. And I think I'll upload the video when it's time to upload the video. Uh, I'll, I have, I just have to keep uploading to YouTube and then somewhat, and then it verifies me after like two months. I'll just keep uploading my thoughts to YouTube and then it'll verify me soon. But anyway, back to the top of the video. A lot of people, I think Joe, our Joe, our friend Joe over here, decided to scrap and he's got a wife and kids with people that he doesn't really like, which is a big issue, I think, in modern men. And he's kind of just been trapped in servitude and almost, how do I say this? Fong, what are you doing? Big stretch, big stretch. I'm getting sidetracked. He's just being castrated by the responsibilities of modern life. Like you see a lot in TV shows as well. The girl is really smart and she can get all things together. Single mom, power. Oh yeah, women are really smart. This, this thought in which women are really smart and super independent and can solve it all by themselves and the guy is kind of stupid and goofy and just kind of like, you know, waste of space a bit, you know what I'm saying? And especially in a modern family, which is what I've seen. The guy's fat, first of all, which is a sign of low value, uh, value male. He's fat. The main character, uh, the dad, the older dad who has like a Latina woman, probably has like sex once a month, if he's a good boy. And she's probably cheating on him, or someone else better, or even being completely celibate as well, which is a horrible relationship to be in. Especially for the man. Because he enjoys that. Why look at you? You need some voidless stare, bro. Hey, Oni. What do I look like on this angle? You know what I mean, Curry? It's my dog. <laughs> Our friend, our average Joe over here was kind of trapped, like I said before, and I think he was complete, like you know, even a parallel. He was a complete duplicate, a complete copy of this older gentleman I saw in in the show Modern Family. And I remember in, in an episode, which is the only episode that I actually watched in not entirety, but like the, the first twenty minutes and then the latter twenty minutes. So I think it's again like fifty minute episode or something like that. And then I didn't watch the rest of it because I thought it was mind boggling mind bogglingly boring and obviously fucking mundane. What I saw in this show was is that he was partying one time or in a bar and he was trying to hit on a girl while having a wife. Amazing, right? He was trying to hit on a girl and he shouted because the girl rejected him. She's like, Oh I'm fine, I'm busy tonight later tonight da, 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 bullshit. To get your ass away. He's like, I'm a catch. Something like that. In like pure unbroiled, unbroiled rage and offended at the fact that the girl wasn't attracted to him. It was quite sad after the fact. It's about having a wife at home, by the way. So this is like ultimate cockery. And the wife is most likely sleeping with someone else. I, I, could, I knew her from the get go. She's hot, she's young, she's Latina. She's gonna find someone else. She's much better than you. And this guy, he said, I'm a catch. Like, maybe you are a catch in your delusional eyes. But in my eyes, the objective truth eyes, you are a low value male. In all, in all sense, you're a low value male. I found this very worrying because the average Joe here was trying to give me advice about business plan and ETFs and stock market investments and invest in this company, 400 grand in this company to earn 40 grand a year passively. That, that doesn't even sound like a good investment. It was like, Four million to earn four hundred grand a year. Okay, fine. But you're investing four hundred grand to earn forty k. You could use that four hundred grand for investments in yourself, in your own business, in your own personal uh, endeavors. And this guy's mindset is: once he reaches four hundred grand in like the profit on like net income, or like just sell everything and just invest in the stock market and do absolutely nothing with his life and just live penny pitching with 40 grand a year on the stock market which isn't even fucking reliable 
Like, no one can predict the stock market. Not the financial planner, not the Wall Street bet advisor, none of this, no, 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 no. No one can. Of course they can give rough predictions. Those, that's just it. They can give educated guesses, but that's about it. Educated guesses, rough predictions. The stock market is inherently volatile. So is the crypto market. So is all the free exchange markets. Facebook, in its attempt to keep up with the estimated Wall Street, Wall, Wall market, Wall Street market growth that's predicted for it, sells data of its users on a massive scale to advertisers to make money and to keep everything ad free and friendly, friendly looking. I don't have anything against really selling my data. I'm not like selling my personal information or some shit. It's selling like what I like and what it's on my voice. And that, you know, you know that you know that saying. Um, what was it again? You when you talk about something and then your phone immediately picks up on it and then you see an advertisement of it, or like Facebook stuff or shit or Instagram. I don't have Instagram. I have Facebook though for sales only. I can show you my Facebook time usage with my phone. Oh, I didn't even know what my phone was. I was using it as my camera stand. Look at this shit. Um, I have an abysmally low phone usage. I have three minutes today. Three minutes today. Yesterday, it was an hour and 48 minutes. I used Facebook for roughly 27 minutes. I was being a spug, I admit. 27 minutes of Facebook. Look, you can see yourself. You have two eyes, you use them. And I had 28 minutes the other day, half an hour. I don't use my phone. I try to hit my 10 minute YouTube thing. I mean, using YouTube 10 minutes pretty, pretty consistently for a while. I use it for four hours on Monday, the 27th of February, but for the rest of the week, I use it for 20 minutes, back to 10 minutes. I need to make a video on how I actually reduced my YouTube usage by so much. And I don't use what on YouTube I, as well on PC, even though I have the ability to. Anyways. I'm getting advice from Paul, who's telling me to invest 400 grand in, to, into 40k on the stock market and just penny pinch his way around the world. This is completely wrong. Like you're too premature to do that. And how could you get 400k anyway? How could you possibly attain 400 grand? He's telling me about 400 grand to turn into 40k. This is purely hypothetical. Does he have 400 grand to play with? No. He works on 9 to 5 and he's 50. I tell him the only good advice he's told me so far is that I lack focus. But then again, once I do have focus, the advice that he gives to me kind of just fades into the obsolete. And this is me this is not me talking shit about Paul. This is this is Paul talking shit about himself, if anything. He trusts the stock market so much when people have lost hundreds of millions, perhaps even billions within the stock market in the end of that hole of losing money. That money goes to someone, somewhere, but in, in, in your eyes, you lost that shit. You know, like crypto, a peak. The problem with crypto is, and with that, that, that meme coin that everyone wants to go to a dollar, right? Was it sh not Shiba Inu? Was it Shiba Inu? Was it Dogecoin? I don't remember exactly. I don't keep up to that shit. That shit's shit in my eyes. The only trustable ones are like Bitcoin and Ethereum and building on my point now, even so, Bitcoin and Ethereum, Bitcoin at its peak was $63,000. If people were predicting it to go to $100,000, it did not go to $100,000, it crashed. That was the all-time peak of it. And $63,000, that's around £50,000, £51,000. It's now at like twelve grand. It went from fifty k. GBP to 12k. There's a 37k downward spiral. I think it's like $20,000 right now for a Bitcoin. For 63k. That's 43k loss. 37k loss. $40,000 loss. £37,000 loss. You know that shit, right? That might not seem like a lot. It might seem too foreign to you. It might seem alien. How the fuck? Oh, my stomach hurts. Owie. But trust me when I say this. Within that 37 grand, 
within that $43,000, millions have lost billions within Bitcoin. And because of the skewed value, because of the rate in which all the Bitcoin has come, like Bitcoin farming isn't even viable anymore because so much Bitcoin is being found. It's actually quite unviable to invest into Bitcoin farming because it's literally an oversaturated industry. Like a lot of people say, oh, oversaturated industry, so you can still succeed, of course. Like, it's still probable, no, it's still there's a possibility that you succeed, but it's highly improbable, of course, right? And it's not me shitting on Bitcoin, it's not me shitting on people that made a bunch of money with Bitcoin. But the problem with Bitcoin, which I'm going to come into in a minute, is that if you make a bunch of money, let's say Shiba Inu or Doge Coin, which is a dollar, and then you stacked up 25 million, 30 million of it, and now you've got 30 million dollars in cash, and you just and you decide to make the move, you take out 50 grand, you move to Dubai, you rent a relatively cheap place, you come and sit in Dubai, you, you clean out your money, 30, 30 million, and then you start doing whatever the fuck you want in life. If possible. Because of its skewed value, because there's so much in circulation, it cannot go to a dollar. Because of the skewed value of Bitcoin and Ethereum, it, it will go up again, I believe so, but not within the next five years. Or probably within the next five years, but not within the next year or two or three. Maximum four. That's my prediction. And you could be like, oh yeah, but Jimmy, you're not qualified to predict it. How, how would I be qualified? There's only so much you can learn. Most success of all the other, uh, all the coins rides on the success of Bitcoin and Ethereum. Best case scenario, you find a coin that's going positive, that's going up, and then everything else, like Bitcoin and Ethereum, and what was it? Uh, aluminum, not aluminum coin, USD, all that shit goes down. That's the best case scenario. But everything's fucking going down. The, Br the British pound's going down. We've seen the Great Recession again in, in England. The dollar is going down because they're printing out by the dime a dozen. Scarcity equals value. When scarcity is skewed, value is skewed. And when value is skewed, it's very, very difficult to make money. Let's say, yeah, uh, move on to my crypto millionaire point. You're a crypto geek and you're, you're a crypto geek and you made a bunch of fucking money with crypto. Amazing, phenomenal. I'm actually proud of you, in fact. You, you, for Mr. the Goose, you got, out, you got in and you got out at the right time and you made a bunch of money. Woohoo! Obviously, that money was someone else's, but the game was the game, right? Some, if you're providing product or service, that's still, that money is still someone else's. It's not yours. But after the crypto market crashes like it does now, you have to be realistic. You have to be delusionally optimistic, but you have to be utterly realistic. It's like um, with sports, you have to be absolutely ruthless with your own performance and your ability, and you still have to be delusionally optimistic enough to believe that you can become better. I think the same can be applied in business in every possible way. You, you say you're a crypto millionaire and you're rich as fuck. Woohoo! Woohoo! You got 50 million, you cleaned it out, you went to Dubai, you did all the right things, you got in, you got out at the right time, you did the work, you're selling a crypto course now, you're making a bunch of money off that as well, making like 50 grand a month off that. <laughs> Life's looking fucking good. But let's say. Crypto fully crashes like it is now, and you never made a crypto course, or you made a crypto course and it didn't do particularly well because no one's really trusting crypto, and most information probably got leaked from, from a pirate attack happens. What then? Where's your skills, your hard skills, your tangible assets that will survive recession? Where's your recession proof skills, recession proof assets, your ability, your abilities, your hard work ethic? I'm sure you can develop a hard work ethic within crypto. <laughs> but what is a hard work ethic? Shitting out multiple coins, shitting out multiple NFTs, and hoping it goes up? Come on, bro. Hope is a very, very powerful thing. I cannot deny the value of hope, the power of hope, but still, come on. And this ties into my ultimate point, which was what you're taking advice from. Look out for who you're taking advice from. Look out and Truly analyze what the fuck you what the fuck you're listening to. Are you listening to the ultra rich guy who's made it and made it made it in a semi realistic way in which you believe that you could possibly make it as well, you see yourself making it? Or did you take advice from Joe over here, the average Joe? 
who thinks he's a Chad, Joel to Chad. That's gonna be my. That's my. That's gonna be my Jeffrey Tadonis. Joel to Chad. It doesn't have a nice ring of it, like Jeffrey Tadonis. But you know, you gotta just keep saying, and it has a nice ring to it. I have Joel over here compared to Chad. MJ DeMarco is a Chad. Joel is Joe, average Joe. He's fifty. He's working a nine to five. He tomorrow invests four hundred grand in into this particular company, and they will give you back the money any time you want, and you get forty grand a, a year off of it. Who would you rather listen to? Tell me. That's like three, three, three grand, four grand a month, which is really good money, of four hundred grand investments. Where is one more zero with four million? You can turn that four hundred grand to four million. Assuming that you're capable. Assuming that you're industrious. Assuming that you are. That guy. <laughs> turn that four hundred grand to four million, and you can be confidently earning thirty grand a month. With a ten percent, five percent, even five percent earning, uh, you're still earning two hundred k a month or five percent. Comfortable. You could be earning comfortable thirty grand a month, fifteen grand a month instead. That's more vibe. That's freedom. Three four grand a month is really good money, but if you're an adult working a job, no adult working a job. Okay, working a job is gonna be tough for you to time for your money, but if you're an adult. You have kids, you have responsibilities, you have your wife, your kids, like I said before, you have house, you have car, you have bills, you have, maybe you have debt from school, from uni, the, the, the four or five years you wasted in uni, fucking around, partying, woohoo! That four grand a month is not going to be enough. And you're going to end up realizing it's never going to be enough. You're going to think to yourself, oh, with money, it's never going to be enough, which is wrong. It, it, at some point, you do reach it, it, it is enough. And then you rationalize. Depressed millionaire or happy in a Honda. And you keep screaming to yourself, yourself that shit every single fucking day as if you're gonna be happy in it. You're not happy in the Honda. Wake up. It's not that shit. Wake up to reality. What's wrong with you? God. God, you sound wrong, boys. Fongy. Why are you sad? This video is like shitting on the average Joel over here, or Joel over here that I talked about. But it isn't shitting on it about it. But I still asked myself the question as I was cooking today. How the fuck did you waste 40 years of your life? I say 40 years because you reach a certain level of sentience when you're 10 years old. But you're kind of still too stupid to understand what's going on. And until you're 16, 17, 18 is when you truly like, how do I say this, wake up. And start realizing the world around you. And start being exposed to stress. And start being exposed to Ooh Voice crack You guys got me You guys got me You start being exposed to the Reality of the world around you And I ask myself How the fuck did you waste that many years? Honestly I don't see myself wasting four years And he told me That oh it's 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 impossible to become rich within a year And then you severely underestimated a year Which in turn told me just immensely so much about his character my mom was showing me about this she told me that oh yeah a year ago you said to me that this this and that and you'd be in this place and that place and da, 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 da. yeah i agree i should be more successful i agree but then i immediately shut her up i don't mean to like shut i don't mean to spread the message you should shut your, your parents up it's like you should try to seek, you should seek to improve yourself, to impress your parents. You should seek to become better to impress your parents. Because your parents and your family are some of the only people that are genuinely worth impressing. Not your friends. Your friends are not worth impressing. I don't, I stand about that to death. Your parents are not worth, no, your parents are worth impressing. Your friends are not worth impressing. And what, your friends, if you're a young, young man, what, what are they going to be impressed by? You got the Tony Bomb 4K in Apex Legends. You got a high score in the video game. You earn the most money in the video game. Maybe you got a job. If you're a bit older, you're a millennial. Maybe you got a job earning 30, 40, 50k a year. Wow, they're all impressed. It's great, right? No, it's not great. It's not fucking great at all.
Don't see the approach your friends. See the approach yourself. And second, your family. Best about all things. And then I shot a video of myself a year ago. I think I'll put this in an edited segment as well. This video is very, very valuable to me. I'll put this in an edited segment as well. I, I put I shot a video myself a year ago and I was spotty, I had long hair, I was feminine, I was fat, I was shaped like a woman, like big hips, small waist and everything, and a kind of very, very feminine frame. The result of obviously the result of like fluoride in the water and everything, this, this and that, oh and plastics and your food and everything like that. But then again, is there masculine men eating the same food that I eat? Yes. Problem isn't the food, the problem is me. Anyway, it's been a year since then, and I've changed radically. Started my own business, started my own YouTube. I've changed myself radically within my fitness journey, changed myself radically within my mindset, within the way I approach things, my mental health. For a year ago, I was in a bad place. I remember being immensely depressed, anxious, still going to school at the time, which was socially acceptable, but I felt so nervous and unsure and uncertain I got a lot of school I was going to school with the thought of yeah I'm not sure about what I'm doing with school and I'm pretty much failing like I was doing good for like some months I was getting like A's and B's for a while but then I started failing and I was like worried because I was failing but then I realized like my efforts were futile because if I just ended up spending the, the rest of the year just working on school being complacent I probably would not see any benefit out of it other than getting a job like no one gives a fuck about your grades no one cares um, Joe said to me this is the other this is two pieces of advice coach Joe said to me your grades mean nothing and you lack focus those are two main points with me that I needed to fix and now I've fixed them there's no no more good advice to give me I'll have a straw over here Joe's a good guy Joe's a stupid guy and I don't want to take advice from stupid people because I'll just end up being stupid as well. And I made some stupid decisions in the past, especially with video editing. Um, I recently got into the like the flow of video editing and I was video editing at like 4 a.m. in the morning, I was grinding out that shit. And I cannot describe to you the amount of joy and pleasure I had in video editing, genuinely. Um, I surrounded myself with people. It's like, it's, it's the same thing, like, my friends told me, oh, I don't know how you do it, Jimmy. I really hate video editing, uh, it takes so much time and it's so much thing and this and that and that, and that and before I knew it I ended up subscribing to the same philosophy. It's the same with my Discord dating show. Everyone told me if it stresses you out you don't need to do it. Which is the worst fucking advice ever. If it stresses you out you need to do it. Even more so. I took advice because I was stupid and lazy and, and it pisses me off looking back. But it's a, val it's a valuable learning lesson. I took advice from people that are lazy that was stupid, that told me to be complacent, and I became complacent, and now I'm behind on the Discord Dane show by a year, plus. It's 2021, it's 2023 now. January or March, I no, I think it was like April, or June, July, and I recorded Discord Dane show in 2021. It's been two years since then. Because of shit advice, I've wasted two years of my life. And two years is significant in the grand scheme of life, but two years to me, the 17 year old, is immensely significant. Because I've barely lived life. It's very worrying that individuals that don't know shit it will gladly, willingly give you advice. And I'm telling you this, and you'd be like, oh, but Jimmy, you don't know shit because, Jimmy, you took advice from idiots, and you, you waste two years of life, and you're coping and you're you're telling us your regrets because you hate it. You you made a mistake in your past. And da, 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 da. Well, yeah. That's the whole shtick. That's the whole point. I made a mistake and I'm trying to give you advice to avoid that mistake so you can live a better life. Obviously, this benefits me in some way as well. YouTube AdSense, maybe. I don't think I'll ever put you monetization on this channel. Cause I don't think it will actually work. I don't think this channel will actually go viral with the way I make videos. Perhaps 600, 700 videos later, like this, I probably will go viral. I'll get a good topic or a good idea in my hand. I'll talk about the topic and I'll get super viral and there's immense amounts of value. But that's about it. Like Hamza, he got millions of views on his Hamza Unfiltered channel. He was earning like one, two grand, three, four, five grand a month. 
of each bad cent, and that's no, it's not five grand. He said one point one or two k a month of essence, and he got like hundreds, of thousands of views, millions of views even, with like hundreds of thousands of subscribers from that channel. I don't see this. That's like fun money. That's funny money. At that point, for him, at that point, for him, he made more money from the main channel and the editing and hyper editing and selling the courses and selling the ebooks and being affiliate marketing with a unscripted video. That's not the shit I'm in this business. I think he's it's still a mentally successful for doing so. But that's funny money at the point for him. So only has twelve grand a year. That's literally just fun money. That's it. I will likely never turn on monetization for this channel. And if I do, I'll tell you. Because you guys are my boys, you know. What are you taking advice from? How can you back on that point? Because I've wasted two years of my life. I become increasingly frustrated every time I mention it or I look back at it. I could have this credential by now. I could have fallen into the editing. I could fall in love with the process instead of the event. I could have had something successful going from the age of 15 to 17. Two years of YouTube experience. Come on. You're going to be successful on YouTube if you have two years of YouTube experience, consistently uploading, having hundreds of videos. Think of YouTube here. As long as you're consistent and you upload a bunch of videos and you are truthful and you're honest to yourself, I believe you can become successful. But this does require 600 to 1,800 videos, which is like the threshold which I've seen. If you've reached that threshold, it's difficult not to be successful. Obviously, you're not guaranteed to be successful. It's still a big famoose. But still, of the 600 videos of good quality content, not like shit posting, all these shit posting is still against the where so it gets that number. But then if it just becomes an arbitrary number, you don't actually have good quality videos that people will actually willingly watch and that's willingly that's actually valuable to the algorithm and to people. And after these valuable videos of high quality effort, you will become viral. That is a luck, that's probability. If the probability of becoming viral is zero point zero zero one percent. Now you need to reach like I don't know, a hundred thousand tries. Zero point zero zero one. one. Okay, guys, I'm gonna look stupid here. Let's get a hundred. Ten thousand. You're gonna have ten thousand tries, ten thousand videos. If it's zero point zero zero one percent, which isn't even that fuck, which isn't even, which is a pretty low number. But for YouTube for, uh, algorithm success, I, I actually fear becoming successful of YouTube because then I'm open to judgment and people get to see me from my raw self and my shy, embarrassing self. It's a big issue, but then there's monetary success and yeah, it's, it's weird to think about. Because I know I'm open to scrutiny, which I'm, I'm terrified about. I was open to scrutiny before my friend told me that I was delusional as fuck, that I was bugging, that I was crazy when I uploaded it on my, on my other unfiltered channel and I took down the video because I was unsure and unhappy about it I took advice from the wrong person yeah, I'm pretty sure he told me to take down the video as well and I was like yeah sure because it would be a bad look but if anything looking back on that video I think it was one of the best videos I made because it was me literally worrying about the future literally being worried and scared and anxious you can see me worry about the future and try to take action as well I think there's immense value in that and you might think like, oh, why would you make that video? It looks bad now. Da, 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 da. Exactly. It looks bad now because you are in a bad position now. And the, the act of recording it isn't simply recording. The act of recording it is something greater. It's a, it's a stamp, a, 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 a mark. A mark in which you decided to make a promise to yourself. That video is out there as a promise for you to actually change. Because then if that video will probably get like 50 views, some people might comment, where are you now? What are you doing now? That makes you accountable. That makes you responsible. That makes you think. Which I, think, which I find immense value in. Immense value in. Because recently a guy, I made like a video before that I make a million in a year. A million in like a year and a half. And I had like five months to go to get my life in order to get a monastic focus to get my, my shit together, right? And then people, it, the, the video went, they didn't go viral, it just got like 100 views, but then people in the comments were like, okay, so where are you now? Boom, accountability. 
something like that's invaluable to me because that instantly snapped me out of my complacent shell. But I, I genuinely, I'm telling you right now, I fell into complacency after that. I don't read books. I wasn't on my focus. I, I barely meditated. I barely did work. I just did, I did bare minimum for everything. I was with my friends playing video games, still being complacent, no fuck. I got nowhere. So you need to watch who you're taking advice from. I can take advice from MG DeMarco telling me no business plan, telling me take action, telling me to identify a value you need, or I can listen to Joe over here. So you can listen to Chad, or you can listen to Joe. The Joe over here is telling me invest 400k to make 40k, and of course, that's still good money. If you're, if you're young at my age, you're making 4k a month, that's amazing money. But if you're an adult, 50 years old, You've got kids to take care of, you've got a house to mortgage to take care of, you've got debt from your school that you used to go to, your uni, uni that you used to go to, they are probably not going to pay off, you're just going to leave it with you until you die, and it might get passed on to your kids, which is, oh, great, great on you, granddad. Woohoo! Most grandparents, not a lot of grandparents, that are good, they leave inheritances to their children. You're the one that leaves fucking debt. It tells you, no, think about business plan, think about this, and that. Every plan pivots. Every business plan pivots. Every fitness plan pivots. Every health plan, every everything that's planned out pivots and failed in some way that you could not possibly imagine. It's like playing a game of chess. You're taking the center, pawn take, pawn take, pawn take, pawn take, rook take, rook take, rook take, oh uh, no, knight take, bishop take, queen take, king take, oh, you lost that trade. You didn't even see that you lost that trade. When you analyze and you're like, take, 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 take. You're like, oh yeah, I win this trade. Yeah, easy. You didn't account for the bishop in the fucking corner. You didn't account for the rook that's being freed up. That's extra realist that to take center. Now that you can't take center. You didn't account for shit. And you paid the price. And that's like business plans. Chess is a perfect parallel to life. Chess is a perfect reflection of life, not a parallel. It's parallel. It's parallel, but even the right word. I'm pretty sure a parallel is like a parallel is the right word. And the average Joe here that was telling me this, mutual funds, mutual funds, mutual funds. People that are hedge fund managers are mutual funds. Like I don't mean to show them. They have to, they have to eat as well. They have they have to eat. They have to make a living. They have to make a profit so they can eat. But they're just trying to take your money so they can make money with it. I don't know if fractional preserve or fractional reserve banking exists. When you put your money in the bank, 9% of it goes. Like we, every, everyone tries to take it out, everyone knows this. If everyone tries to take that money from the bank, the bank crashes. 